All right. Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell. It's the day after April Fool's Day, 2015. I've got a bit of a sinus today again, but uh, it, it fits that it's 2015, a day after April Fool's Day, because the news and views from the Nefarium this past two weeks, it's been really hard to keep up with. And uh, today, particularly, the Nefarium has been busy. If you've been following the news in the world of international finance, there's been a lot of developments. And a lot of you have been sending me articles about the Chinese Asian Infrastructure Development Bank. And uh, I have an article that I found on, on the Daily Bell. Our good friends at the Daily Bell came out with an op-ed piece. And I want to read portions of this to you because I think they're to a certain degree on target with what may be going on with this new bank. But I want to offer some of my own speculations. A lot of you have seen and commented in very much the same way about what you think this new development bank means. But here's the crux of it. Here's what the Daily Bell said on March 18th. Defying U.S. European allies say they'll join the China-led bank. Germany, France, and Italy said on Tuesday they would join a new China-led Asian investment bank after close ally Britain defied U.S. pressure to become a founder member of a venture seen in Washington as a rival to the World Bank. And then later on in the article, it states this, the concerted move to participate in Beijing's flagship economic outreach project was a diplomatic blow to the United States. And let me add, it was diplomatic hammer blows to the United States because we saw the big four European powers defect almost immediately and rush to become founder members and not only Britain, but as as the uh, article says here, German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schäuble made the announcement at a joint news conference with visiting Chinese Vice Premier Mai Kai, at which no questions were allowed. He said Germany, Europe's biggest economy and a major trading partner of Beijing, would be a founding member of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. So look what we have, folks. We have an almost complete diplomatic collapse of European allies' support for the post-war international financial structure that the United States put into place with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank. And now, Great Britain and Germany are founding members. In other words, they're going to have a voice in this new Chinese-led Asian Development Bank. All right, now, couple that, if you'll recall, with the development of the BRICSA Bank between Russia, China, India, Brazil, and South Africa. Couple this, this is huge news. Now, it's huge news because of several reasons, and here's what the Daily Bell thinks about it. They comment that they had contacted the well-known uh, financial author John Perkins. Many of you may have heard of him. He was the author of Confessions of an Economic Hitman. And in that book, he details how the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank were used by American corporations basically to turn third and second world countries into provinces, financial provinces of the United States through loans that they could not repay. In other words, by perpetually indebting them to this financial structure, these countries were basically put under the economic thumb. Now, the drawback to this post-war structure was that it was largely in the control of the United States. And now what you see happening is a revolt against that structure. Not necessarily, please understand this, not necessarily the principles on which it is based. And this is precisely the point that the Daily Bell article zeroes in on. The World Bank, they're citing John Perkins now, the World Bank is a tool of economic hitmen. There is no question about it. It is the tool of the big corporations, the IMF, and most of what we call the intelligence agencies of the United States. Now, there it is, folks, right there. I've been arguing 
All along, I stated this principle at the Secret Space Program conference in San Mateo, uh, California last year, that with the decision to establish a secret hidden slush fund of finance based on fraud and so on and so forth, what the United States was doing was it was harvesting the wealth of the world to create a slush fund for covert operations to fight communism at the time and to develop off the books exotic technologies. Now, what Perkins has just told you is that the IMF and World Bank are part of that structure because, like I put it at the San Mateo conference, the decision by Truman to create this hidden financial structure utilizing Axis loot put the American intelligence agencies into the banking business directly. All right, and here we have a little bit of confirmation. So in other words, I want you to pay attention to what the implication is here. This means that not only are Britain, Germany, France, Italy, the, the big four in the European Union, not only are these nations fed up with the financial unipolarism that this structure gives to Washington, D.C., and they're seeing in the Chinese bank a way to circumvent that and gain greater independence and to a certain extent a measure of more sovereignty over their own financial and political and military affairs. Not only are they revolting against the financial structure, my friends, they're revolting against that hidden system of finance and they're revolting against the presence of American intelligence using this system that it has penetrated and to a certain degree set up and influenced as a mechanism of funding American black projects. That is huge, all right? That's just part of my high-octane speculation. Now let me get back to the Daily Bell here and to the statements of John Perkins because he says something else very interesting. So when the people of the country would be left holding huge debt, that's the country that the IMF and World Bank are loaning money to, that they couldn't repay, we would come back and say, well, since you can't repay your debt, you have to restructure your loan. That's when the IMF comes in. So the World Bank makes the original loan, and the IMF shows up and says, we'll help you restructure your loan, but in order to do that, you have to meet certain conditionalities. You have to sell your oil or whatever the coveted resource is at a cheap price to the oil companies without restrictions. Or they would suggest that the country sell electric utilities, water, and sewage, maybe even its schools and jails to private multinational corporations. This is a huge system, friends, of financial slavery and fraud or maybe allow military bases to be built, these sorts of things. Now, this is the Daily Bell commenting on Perkins. Listen carefully. This is the model that China and Asia presumably want to overtake. The idea is that a bank led by China will be less obviously exploitative and will con actually end money, lend money that will find its way to projects rather than to Swiss bank accounts. Obviously, there is an awareness of the deficiencies of the World Bank. A joint statement made assuring the world that it, the new bank would follow, quote, the best standards and practices in terms of governance, safeguards, debt, and procurement policies, unquote. Of course, being cynical about such things, and the Daily Bell is right to be cynical. Human nature is human nature. This new bank is, is ultimately not going to be run any more or less corruptly than the IMF World Bank system, even if it's led by the Chinese or the Germans or the French or the Russians or whoever. Ultimately, it's the same game, but there's a, there's a point to that, and I'll get to it in a minute. Of course, being cynical about such things, we don't think for a minute that this new bank will operate much differently than the World Bank. Maybe for a while it will be kinder and gentler. But why would one believe the Chinese ultimately will operate their bank more altruistically than the West? And that is the question. Now, because the European powers, especially Germany, and let's not forget Great Britain, our traditional ally. These two nations revolting to become founding members of this new international banking system 
is to me a huge diplomatic defeat for the United States. So in very recent days, the United States has come out in favor of the Chinese Development Bank. And what that means is the United States is playing to get a role of influence in that system. Now, I'm going to suggest three things here. I think the Daily Bell is absolutely correct, and I have been thinking this myself. Many of you who have been sending me these articles have suggested the same thing, that this is first opposition to the unipolar financial and military policy that we've seen Washington use since the collapse of the Soviet Union, and much more since 9-11. In fact, what we have been seeing is a revolt, basically, of allies to this ham-fisted American approach to foreign policy in the last eight years. Now, I'm going to suggest there's two other agendas here besides this revolt, and I've already suggested what one of them is. Part of that revolt is the knowledge that this current financial structure forms a hidden financial mechanism for the supply of money to American covert projects and covert action slush funds, all right? So it's a revolt to the penetration of American intelligence and the resulting corruption in the international financial world. That's why, in my opinion, you really see the United Kingdom and Germany in particular, two nations with enormous intelligence gathering resources, revolting to this Asian Development Bank, in addition to the fact that they've got lots of Chinese trade, all right? But I'm going to suggest that the second thing here is that these nations want to participate and have a greater say in the creation or use, pardon me, of the SDRs, that those are the special drawing rights. It's a unit of account in international finance that is composed of a basket of currencies, all right? And if you recall recent financial news, China has been pushing for the renminbi, for its yuan, to be a part of that basket of currencies, and therefore for China to have a say, an influential say, in how the SDR is managed. So, this brings me to my third point. I think, thirdly, what all of this means is you are watching under the guise of the creation of a multipolar international financial world. What you're also witnessing is, and, and this is the observation of uh, former Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Catherine Austin Fitz. She said this to me, so I want to make sure and credit her with this idea. What you're also seeing is the creation of redundancy in the international financial system. Now, when we say it that way, not only are we creating a multipolar financial system as a stepping stone to a new global financial system, all right, are you with me? But we're also seeing something else. We're seeing the creation of redundancy. In other words, there are parallel mechanisms now being set up. And friends, the ultimate reason that you set up redundant systems like this is to mitigate any dent, pardon me, any damage to assets of international financial clearing that might be potentially threatened by somebody. Now, when you put it that way, in other words, the military purpose is revealed. And once you reveal the military purpose, then you have to ask the question, well, then against whom are they protecting the international financial system? Is it they're protecting it from terrorists or some other threat? So uh, I think these developments, friends, are highly significant. In fact, they're so significant, I will probably be commenting in the coming week or so uh, on my written blogs on the website. But anyway, I thought you should hear that analysis from the Daily Bell and my high-octane speculations of the day of what the Nefarium is up to now. So that's it for news and views from the Nefarium for this week. I'm Joseph P. Farrell. I'll see you all on the flip side, and bye-bye, and God bless.